Hello friends. This is Derry Wars Chapter 4 and the title of the chapter is Compromise. Sheila the waitress you remember is trying to create some sort of peace, less tension between the man with the gun and the man who's his captive in the restaurant. Sheila served up three plates with jacket potatoes, side salad and a cheese and onion filling, her favourite, but she wasn't going to start taking separate orders here. As she served them to her customers, she laughed and said, Well gentlemen, if this is going to be a long siege, I can promise you we'll be eating well and at the expense of my bosses. Much to her surprise, both men laughed and seemed to be enjoying the joke as one. She had forgotten the cutlery and as she walked back to collect it, Wesley looked at Patrick and whispered, She's a great wee girl, that. Patrick nodded. Both men were impressed by her ability to cope in a dangerous and very intense atmosphere. Maybe she's our future Wesley. They ate in silence for a few minutes and Sheila was trying to think of something to say but her head was spinning and she was tired and it started to occur to her that the one man in this situation, the one man in this situation had a real problem. Sooner or later he'd be fighting sleep it helped her to understand that in the end this couldn't last too long. The men ate ravenously, both aware that it might be the last meal. But Wesley knew that when he entered the establishment, he had no thoughts of eating with the man who killed his father. He paused and looked at his enemy. In his heart, he had a different feeling. If these two men had been neighbours growing up together, they could have been friends. He asked himself a question, half aimed at God mentally. However did this wee country get so full of all this hate? Patrick was eating his food with the usual relish that he had for food. Those years in the maids had taught him that if ever he enjoyed better food he would relish it. But he did notice the thoughtful look on Wesley's face. Do you ever wonder, Wesley, where we never get to understand each other in the two communities? Are you reading my mind? For the first time Wesley smiled at him. How did we ever get to be like this? Sheila knew that this was important and decided to just listen. Patrick scratched his chin and turned his eyes in a full circle. He was trying to choose his words with the kind of care that would make them like healing balm rather than stinging antiseptic and he knew that meant moving slowly. Did you have Catholic neighbours in the past Wesley? Aye sure we did, Tony Mom Road was a mix. Did you like them? When you were growing up I mean. I liked some of them. One family, the Flynns, were right nice, and my dad and Mick used to help each other out with jobs on the farm at times, shared equipment and help with animals and things. I used to hang around a bit with the son Paul, he was year, about a year younger than me. I guess away up there neither of us had anybody else. So you knew Catholics? Were you ever in the house? A bit. Mrs Flynn was nice to me. Was Paul in your house? Oh, he was. We had a telly before then, and... He used to come and watch it when we were just little kids. Did you trust him when you were kids, I mean? Aye, I guess. Did you trust him when you were 16? I'm not sure. The troubles were starting, or threatening anyway, and my dad used to say, Be careful what you say now, son. And that had an effect on me, I suppose. Exactly. Patrick stopped to let the thoughts sink in, and he chewed a mouthful of salad before adding, we were taught not to trust you, and you were taught not to trust us. Sheila and I now joined in. So how many Protestants did you know, Patrick? None, he laughed. How would I get to know them living in the Bogside? I knew the Protestants ran everything, and that was about it. I was taught history from the Catholic point of view, and you were taught it from a prod one, Wesley. True enough, I guess. Your heroes were my villains and vice versa, and my church was a false one to you and yours was a false one to me. We never had a chance to be different, because from the cradle they passed on the prejudices that they were given from the cradle. You know, Wesley, our minds were messed up before we had a chance to use them for ourselves. And across the water the Catholics and Protestants don't care a bit what anyone was. Maybe. But you do know the Protestants got a hard time down South Patrick. No, I don't know that at all. Go them on and... The prods seem to have done very well there, and the Irish constitution guarantees freedom of worship for everybody. So you're trying to tell me that we could all live together in a Protestant, Catholic, united Ireland. I don't believe it. Is that what you're saying, Patrick? 
Sheila was not sure where the conversation was going. My comments were about the past, not the future, Sheila. Do you have Protestant friends? Sheila smiled. Not many, but my best friends are Protestant. There are four of us that hang out together all the time, and Wendy is Church of Ireland. So how did you and she get to be friends? Well, I belong to a dance group called Derry Dolls. We dance at festivals and do some charity work. Wendy started at about eight, same time as me. It's Irish dance and modern dance and anything really. Is it mostly Catholic girls? Yes, but Wendy's mum likes Irish dance and got involved with it too, helping to organise. She's lovely. So you got to know her because her mum's open-minded enough to get her daughter involved in Irish culture. Yeah, but it works both ways. How do you mean? Sheila sipped on her tea thoughtfully. There was a charity fate at her church hall last summer. Cancer. Cancer research it was for. And I went, and so did my parents. So how does your friendship work then, with the differences? Patrick will need to get to the bottom of this. Well, we love each other, so we meet each other halfway. I guess we compromise. Does it work? Oh, aye, nothing will ever separate Wendy and me. She'd die for me, and I would do the same for her. I don't think there's another human on this earth that cares more for me than Wendy does. What do you think of that, Wesley? Patrick was conscious that the gun was now sitting on the table. Time was he would have grabbed it, but not now. I can see it's better that people mix and understand each other, but some divisions are too great. You and I are poles apart. Does that not make it even more important that we try and understand each other then? Sheila said it like a challenge. You two are grown men for goodness sake. Her tone had become almost school teacher like but she had their attention. She was going to say what she wanted to and hoped that it was going to be listened to you too. Do you two not see? This is the answer. The thing you have to think about is how to compromise and you can solve this problem here. Where's the in your heart you don't want to kill this man, you don't really want to die either. If grown men can concentrate on now instead of the past, then you can reach a compromise. And then the three of us can think about how we deal with the folk outside in the best way possible. Sheila's words resonated round the two heads in front of her like a loud noise in a cave, bouncing and echoing. They both knew that she was speaking sense, and each of them was hoping that the other one could see that too. But could they make it work? What do you think, my friends? Could these two people, divided by history and tradition, make things work by some compromise? The next episode reveals a little more on the subject. Thanks for listening and nice to talk to you all. It's a beautiful day again here. We're getting some summer this year and that's good. Love and peace to you my friends from Kate and I. Bye bye for now. Bye bye.